I'm curious, being a 20 something, what is the state of black women as you see it? Um, when you said it, I really didn't know how to answer that question either. But one word that just constantly came to my mind was just resilient. Like, mm. I feel like more than anything for myself or even, you know, when I go home because it was just Thanksgiving and I'm talking to my mom and my grandma, it's just resiliency. Because I know, like, when I'm telling them the things that I'm going through, they can't even fathom having that opportunity to do the things that I am doing or to have the freedom to wear my hair the way I'm wearing it or, you know what I mean, like, just my interactions. So for me, I think it's just resiliency because I feel like what I'm doing or just even just having a voice is not just for me. Mm -hmm. Like, it's, it's for all of us. Right. It's for what you wish you could have said, but the times wouldn't have allowed it. You know That's what right. I mean? Right. So I think the state of black woman is just resiliency, but then also, like, though there's a lot that we need to work through, we should really, like, give ourselves a break because we're doing damn good. Yeah. Yeah. I like yeah. that. Give ourselves a break. You know, I think the the state of our individual being is the state of our collective being. You could not sit here and be experiencing hardship and we not feel it. That's right. You could not be sitting here and feel sadness and we not feel compelled to offer comfort. I think it is um, our superpower in community. I think we can have spaces together and where we go, the world follows. Uh, not just in America, but our influence cast a wide net of influence across this entire globe. And so when I think of us in terms of how we're treated, how we're loved, um, so much of it comes, it's, it's, um, it's our intra um, relationships that we have with each other. And I don't know what I did in a previous life to be so blessed to be born a black woman. I literally would not choose anything else. Me too. Don't you just I, love it? I, I, I love it. I, I, I don't. Love it. I don't know another group of people who have. I agree. This. I really don't. Right. It's three of us talking here, and we invite everybody to tune That's in. That's right. But yeah. we are talking to each other and for each other. There are things that we can say that only we will understand. Absolutely. And you invite one person outside of this group, and the whole vibe changes. Sure. The whole conversation changes. The whole spirit changes. So it's something magical that happens when we come together uh, and have these these types of conversations. Now, I do have to say, um, I think there are challenges oh, with absolutely. us as absolutely. well. And there's a lot of healing uh, to happen. And you know, even in my personal space, I know I have healing to do. We carry trauma from our ancestors. We bore the bruises and babies of our oppressors. And we are carrying all that still. Um, is there an area, Latasha, where you think... Um, this is the most prominent area where we need to heal? You know, I think it's really interesting because as we're talking about, even going back to your first question, the state of black women, we have to acknowledge that, you know, unfortunately, after centuries and centuries, it seems like the world has just discovered, like, oh, look, it's black women. Black right. women are amazing. Right. We've been amazing. Right. Like, we've been here. Yeah. Right? This ain't new. Right. You know, um, but I do think that there is, I want to acknowledge that there is this certain space, and I think part of it is because we're seeing what I call we're in this phantom star moment. And this mm -hmm. is what I remember being in school. I remember being in college, and I remember the uh, in, in one of my classes, I think it was a astronomy class, where the instructor was saying that when you see a star, mm -hmm. um, that m many of the stars, most of the stars that we're seeing in the sky right now, have have burned out like hundreds of that, like hundreds of years ago, mm. right? That by the time we're seeing them, that they're actually we're just really seeing the residue of the light of the star because it took light years for it to get to us. But that there's a it's a new era that there's other stars that are being born every day. I say that to say I think we're in this space right now that white supremacy and patriarchy is dying. Mm -hmm. Now it is fighting like hell to survive. Like hell. But the truth <laughs> of the matter is. It is dying, and there's a transition, and there's a shift. And I think part of what has happened in that space, you're seeing black women, like there's a recognition of black women that I don't think is, is, is based because all of a sudden we're doing something different. I think we've always been resilient. I mm -hmm. think we've always been creative and innovative. I think we've always been fly, yeah. right? You know, but I, I think that there is this particular kind of, of opening that we're seeing right now, whether you say it's in this country in the West, or I even think in the universe, I think that there's this space that there is, because we, our very presence comes up against um, white male patriarchy, 
that there's literally an acknowledgement. There's a certain kind of acknowledgement that we're shining and we're yeah. taking advantage of those spaces. You know, and so, you know, I, I, when I think about healing, I think part of, I think our biggest space around healing is really for us to really unpeel this thing, this identity piece. Because the other part of the black womanhood piece is that we've made it mean something. And sometimes in the space of, and hear me out, in the meaning something, we've taken on this box that we've even put ourselves in. Mm. You know, this notion of black women are strong, black women. In some ways, this superhuman kind of context, this paradigm actually keeps us as a disadvantage because also the world treats us as if our humanity is not right. seen. Right. Like, you know, that we have to be strong all the time, that we can't be vulnerable. Yeah. That, you know, and I and 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 part of what I think, if I think there's a space of healing. I think black women should really think about, like I said, initially, we're everything and all thing all at the same damn time, mm -hmm. right? We should not allow ourselves to be limited or even think of ourselves in a limited way that that our gender or who we are in this, this label of being a black woman actually supersedes the fact that I'm a human being. Absolutely. That I'm a human, that beyond my gender, that beyond my race, that I am the spirit of who I am. I am a spiritual being. Mm -hmm. And so I think that's where the healing should take place. I think the healing for us to actually connect to kind of that soul and that spirit part of who we are and recognize that in my gender, that's an expression. Mm -hmm. That's how my soul chose to express itself this lifetime, right? right? You know, that this idea of race, that that's how I identify myself, but that's not the, the totality of who I am. And so I really believe that's the healing. The healing really is in terms of us getting in touch with our identity, right? And really being able to shape that in such a way that we feel empowered and we don't feel limited. Yeah. You know, I, I, I first of all, amen. I, um, I so embody that thought because you, you know, you both know I've spent, um, decades in, in politics and policy and, you know, at this point in life, um, I, I'm tired of talking about the white man's government. You know, right. <laughs> I'm tired of navigating white folks' corporate spaces, you know, whether it's actual white faces or black people who carry the water for white folks. Like, I, mm -hmm. I need a break from that. I want to talk to us about us. I want to talk about healing. I want to talk about, I mean, obviously, I'll, I'll talk about politics and, you know, we'll have those discussions. But not here. You know, there has to be a safe space where we can come and have this collective uh, discussion and just take a breath. And this for a while, there was this thought like when people started acknowledging our power and they would say, you know, like black women are going to save us. Here's the secret, boo. We ain't trying to save you. We saving ourselves and you benefit. <laughs> you think we sitting around right. sacrificing ourselves? We ain't some self-sacrificing people sitting around. Well, let me make sure the white man being okay. <laughs> you know, that's not what we're here for. And so I I just love um, for a time such as this for us to come together um, and talk about what do we need from ourselves and for ourselves for us to harness joy in our mm. lives. Um, is there an area where you think we need healing? Definitely. I think something that I would highlight, and this is amongst like women to women, but also women to men relationships, I think it's just grace. Mm. And I feel like um, we just lack understanding whether it's generational or whether it's, um, like I said, through opposite sex. Mm -hmm. Because a lot of times, um, you know, I feel like, or... Who on the Breakfast Club we had Miss Pat on, and she like did this whole rant about how my generation only does this and my generation only does that, and I just let her ramble because I have respect for my elders. But at the same time, it's like you're really just generalizing when your generation had the same group that she was talking about in her generation. You know what I mean? So it's just a people thing, and even if people choose to live their life different than you choose, it's not a wrong or right thing because. You know, everybody's operating at their own level of consciousness. So it's who are you to judge? Mm -hmm. So I think instead of just judging each other or shaming or thinking one's better than the other, we should just offer each other more grace. You mm. know, my grandmother and my mother went through things that I never have to go through, thankfully. But because I know they went through that, I understand why some things might be a trigger or I understand why some things might be uncomfortable for them. And so instead of me just trying to force them to understand, it's like, you know what? I see where you're at. That's where you're at, but just respect where I'm at. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So I Absolutely. think that's something that we should practice more. 